Hi, I'm Don. Today we're painting a troll from the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth tabletop game. As usual, the finish will be grim pop like vibrant colors but a little bit of grimness. And then we're painting with speed paints and of course, war paints fanatic. I prime with gray spray can primer and then use war paints fanatic white airbrushing from the top. So now, watch this video as we turn this mini into this. I'm Don, welcome to my channel. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. Also, this channel won't be possible without the support of Army Painter. We are painting with Army Painter Speed Paints 2.0 and then eventually later we'll paint with War Paints Fanatic. So today we're using the War Gamers Edition Wet Palette. My first pro tip when painting with Speed Paints is pre-select your colors. You don't want guessing too much when you're actually painting already. Quick shout out to Redgrass because I'm using their painting handle. They have a Kickstarter on the 14th. Typical of my YouTube videos, will paint the miniature while I talk, while I share like my pro tips in painting with speed paints. Now my second pro tip when painting with speed paints is to experiment layering with speed paints. I am a watercolor painter since I was 12 years old. I took lessons of course and I used to like paint portraits with watercolors. Now layering with speed paints feels similar as to painting with watercolors or even thin down oils. It's a matter of just layering like really thin down paints or thin not too opaque paints on top of each other. Army Painter did a great job as like developing the speed paints as a true one coat solution. So you could speed paint or paint with speed paints with heavy coats and just a few colors and you'll have a pretty nice finish. But as you can see in the video, building up your layers of transparent paints, transparent speed paints will give you more color depth. More color depth, more colors, more paints gives a more interesting look to your miniatures. My third tip is try the speed paint medium. Speed paint medium simply adds transparency to speed paints without thinning it down. If you don't use like the speed paint medium, it's like the speed paints will act more like a wash if you simply add water. A good mixture would be like one part speed paint medium, one part water, and roughly around two parts speed paint. That will give you a more transparent speed paint, but kind of sort of acts like a wash at the same time. It's important to note though that my brushes are moist with water. So when I'm picking up speed paints on the dipping wells, I kind of sort of thin it down a little bit with water. My fourth pro tip when using speed paints is try to learn to control the pooling in some of the details of the miniature. Controlling pooling is as simple as wicking down or wicking out the paint that is pooling on some details of the miniature with a clean brush. But painting in multiple layers will help you control the pooling a little bit more because the first layer would be not too heavy and then the second layer is as heavy as the first layer in that manner because you're painting in multiple layers you still build up the contrast in your painting you build the contrast you have good definition you have more control and you don't have too much pulling notice in the video how i started with lighter colors Usually, you could start, the safest bet is to start with the pastel-ish colors or the more opaque colors. Then once you have a good base like you see in the video, you could now introduce more colors. 
My fifth pro tip when painting with speed paints is to try to blend the edges of your painting while the speed paints are still wet. This is especially true if you're adding additional colors. You could see in the video right now, after applying the paint, I clean my brush and blend the edges of the color. This will give me a nice transition between the base color or initial colors and then my additional colors. Of course, you could thin down the green paint here and apply in multiple layers, but I wanted to like have a really nice, very vibrant color, very vib vibrant green, especially over the textured areas of the skin. So it really depends on how you want to build up your layering of different colors, but make sure that you blend the edges so that you have very nice transitions. My sixth tip, is to consider or think of speed paints as glaze paints. Transparent specialty paints like speed paints, inks, and to some extent even washes are technically or can technically be glaze paints. Glazing is basically just filtering or painting transparent paints on top of a surface. So if you don't allow too much pulling, you're practically glazing with speed paints. So I don't want to say this in my videos, in my YouTube videos, but sometimes, when, especially when you use speed paint medium and you're blending and building up layers with speed paints, it feels like painting with oils. Thin down oils, of course. Now you could see in the video our buildup of colors, the blending of all the colors, and it looks better than just using a few paints. Now my next pro tip when using with speed paints, try to use it with the washes. This part of the painting is filtering. This is called like filtering in fine scale, painting or modeling. You could also use speed paint, thin down with water and speed paint medium and use it as a wash. But here, I'm simply using War Paints Fanatic Wash because the effect or the result of these washes are much more predictable. The filtering here does two things for me. It kind of blends or like gives the miniature a more homogeneous look like all of the colors are put together with the wash. And then it makes the miniature a little bit more darker so that my layering and highlighting later will be more prominent. Now for filtering, I highly recommend that you thin down your filters regardless if you're using Warpaint's Fanatic Wash or thin down speed paints. This is especially true if you don't plan to do a lot of layering and highlighting later and you want to finish the painting of the miniature already. As you can see in the video right now, the washes gave like a more uniform look to the miniature. It kind of brought all of the colors together and you have, of course, deeper shades in the details of the miniature. Now this is looking good already but I wanted a darker skin tone around the belly part so that my highlighting will be more prominent. So I needed to do a couple more passes of washes to make it darker. Another tip is to be very careful not to do over like over layering overlayering of transparent paint similar to watercolor painting will make your painting look muddy. However, if you're going for a grim dark finish or a darker finish, the muddy look might be to your advantage. However, for me, I was going for a grim pop look, meaning it's a little bit grimy or grim but the colors are popping and are very vibrant. Another tip is to finish off all the speed painting with speed paints before you move on to layering or highlighting. This means that you don't need to switch to your wet palette from your dipping wells and it makes your painting a little bit more efficient. Oh by the way, the bony matter here was thinned down with speed paint medium and water. 
Now, in terms of drying time before you could do layering, I live in the Philippines and it's getting hot and humid here. It's, it's we're like around transitioning to summer. So the paints are drying faster than usual. I think I only let it dry for like 10 minutes and then I could do layering on top. Although I'm light-handed, so I don't really rub the paints off like the previous layer, so I'm not getting any problems layering with speed paints. Now my final tip, pro tip when using speed paints, seal the speed paints with matte varnish. Sealing with War Paints Fanatic matte varnish, even with the brush, is a good habit before you do the layering. Now we do layering. It's just a matter of layering or painting towards the highlights. The painting here was done using War Paints Fanatic. I also use a few War Paints Fanatic washes to finish off the miniature. This part of the project or basically the whole video painting tutorial is available at Patreon as usual. But I do have a lot of videos here at YouTube showing how I layer on top of speed paints. I must say though that it took me quite a while to really get used to using the War Paints Fanatic because of the crazy coverage. These days though, I'm used to the coverage, the crazy coverage of War Paints Fanatic and I am layering comfortably on top of the speed paints base color. Layering or painting towards the highlights and refining your highlighting, glazing some shades, and basically making sure that you produce good painting is the most fun part of painting a miniature. However, I must admit, again, it is very time-consuming. Now, before our final thoughts, I would like to thank all of you guys, my viewers, the channel is growing, and of course, my patrons, and special thanks to Army Painter for making this video possible. Now, I call this done. Now, let's sum up all our tips regarding using speed paints and war paints fanatic. My pro tips for using speed paints is 1. Pre-select your colors. 2. Experiment layering with speed paints. 3. Try the speed paint media. 4. Speed paints are technically glaze paints if you don't allow it to settle on recesses. 4 or 5 is filtering. You may use a wash or thin down speed paints. And of course, my last tip for using speed paints is to seal it with varnish. Speed Paints 2.0 does not reactivate similar to the older speed paints, but I highly recommend you still use and seal with a matte varnish. Matte varnishes from other brands doesn't give me the matte finish when you brush it on the miniature. Usually, you need to use an airbrush to get a nice matte varnish, but the new War Paints Fanatic Matte Varnish kind of gave me a really nice matte finish even though I just brushed it on. I still have to observe the matte varnish, War Paints Fanatic matte varnish, if it really does give a matte finish even if you brush it on. But based on my observation with this painting, it kind of gave me a nice matte finish. Now a quick tip, the matte varnish from War Paints Fanatic is kind of thick. So you have to thin it down roughly around 1 is to 1 with water. Then apply the varnish all over the miniature similar to when you apply a wash. But make sure that you wick some pooling in some crevices. That's it Pansit. I hope you like this video. Do like, subscribe and all that stuff. And until my next video guys. Bye! Now, if you like this video, you may like one of these videos that are also painted with Army Painter Paints.